Jason Blood Church coming to you today. God bless uh, each and every one of you today. Wanted to do a little study on prayer as well as being humble in this day and age of uh, self righteousness, of wickedness, of look at me, I'm the best, I have the best job, I have the best car, I have the best house, whatever. We could use a little humbleness. And God sort of demands it from us as Christians in our in our walk. So once you become saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, and if you're not saved, that's the most important decision. Get saved on the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood atonement. When he died on that cross and rose from the dead three days later, that blood um, washes over your sins, past, present, future sins, all washed away. That's the first step. Then you're saved. And then we have a walk. Um, that doesn't mean that you're completely whole. That doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't thrive to not sin. God hates sin. That doesn't mean um, you know it's okay to deceive your brother or sister. That that doesn't mean it's okay to to lie, to swear, to use God's name in vain. Likewise, no, because you make um, you make a mockery of the faith, and you're gonna you're not going to grow in Christ. You're not going to become more um, in terms of rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. The bema seat is a real thing. So let's take a look at Luke. Luke's one of my favorite chapters. I really enjoy it. So it's the importance of prayer. And this is Jesus talking. He spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in the city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine advisory. And he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual continual coming she weary me. So she wore him out. And shall not God avenge his own elect? That's Revelation chapter 6, 9 through 11, if you turn over there. We can go there real quick. Should have marked that page. Oh, bear with me. And when he opened the fifth seal, and I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? All right, so those are the people that are slain during the tribulation. And in verse 7, it continues after avenge his own elect, back in Luke chapter 18, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear along with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So that'll be the second advent. And that goes well with what we just looked at Revelation chapter 6, with the tribulation saints having their head cut off and removed for not taking the mark of the beast. All right, so... And then verse 9 to 14, I, I really like this. this. This is the heart attitude that one must have with prayer. And also it talks about humbling yourself. And again, I think that's important. So it's important to you know humble yourself. It's important to, to do these things. Let's take a look at the verses. Verse 9, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised as others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, to pray, the one a Pharisee, Pharisees, and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. So again, you see the pride. You definitely see this guy has an attitude of his own self-righteousness and that he is, he is righteous due to his own works, that he's not an adulterer, he's not like this publican. Verse 12, I fast twice in the week. And I give tithes to all that I possess. Remember, they're under the law at this point in time. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smot upon his breast, breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. So this guy truly was humbled. He knew that he was he was a sinner. He knew that he wasn't righteous in, in the eyes of God. He knew that he, like us, has a sin problem. Verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his... To his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Do you humble yourself? I guess that's my message today. Do you truly humble yourself? Uh, you know, we certainly could use this qu kind of quality prayer in our life. 
where we realize that, you know, we're nothing but filthy rags. All of our works mean not in the eyes of the Lord. And are you doing the work by giving the gospel? Are you passing out tracts? I mean, these are the things that are only worthy to God. And um, yes, he loves us enough to die for us. But at the same time, you have to realize that you're, we're nothing without the Lord Jesus Christ, without the Holy Ghost within us. And so I, you know, I plead for you to, to not have an air about yourself that you're better than somebody else. Um, I don't think I know more than, than most of you guys, to be honest with you. I just, I just study and read the Word of God, much like a fifth grader could do. Um, the Holy Spirit gives me the words to give to you. It's not me. And um, I'm thankful every day for the blessings I have. And, you know, I know, um, you know, just like you, I, you know, I have to humble myself. And, and, and I pray every day that God will give me the message to give to you. So in your life, just remember to, to do a prayer that's meaningful with your heart. You know, it's, uh, again, some people believe if you just pray a prayer, you're saved. Well, no, if your heart doesn't believe Jesus Christ died on a cross for you, well, then you're not saved. If your heart doesn't, if you don't come to prayer and, and humbleness, um, realizing you have a, a sin problem, even as a walking Christian, you know, everyone has a bad thought that pops in their head or just whatever, you know, trips up here and there. You have to realize that um, it's not what you do that makes you righteous in the, in the eyes of God. It, it's, 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 God did all the work. Jesus Christ did all the work on that cross. And we're just trying to bear, we're trying to walk with him and bear the same burden that Jesus did so we can receive rewards in heaven. You know, there will be Christians that are naked um, in heaven. I hate to say it. Um, I think that's at Revelation 3. We can look there just real quick. If I can find the verse off the top, you know, real quick, but I didn't have it marked. Um, let's see, Revelation 3. And I may not be able to find it, but um, in here it definitely says that you can lose your clothes. Um, yeah, verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, and that thou, that thou mayest be rich in white ram in it. So again, that's all your deeds at the judgment seat of Christ, that tried in fire. Um, the white ram in it is the robe we're going to wear, and they may be clothed, that you might be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, so that, that, that thou mayest see it. See. And let's see here. So, again, you can lose your clothes, um, you know, certainly. And that's actually to the Church of Laodicea in this section, um, which is the church age today from 1900 forward. So anyway, this is just a quick message. Um, you know, we do need to do works so we're not naked. And it's not just a lot of people want to teach, you know, that the heresy of that now you're saved, you don't need to do anything else. That's not true. Uh, yes, you are. Your salvation is secure. And that's that's what the once saved, always saved, believing on the blood of Jesus Christ does for you. But there's there's more to achieve. There's more. There's like more rewards to to receive and more, and more to gain and, and more to lose. Um, and so your walk's important. Uh, I hope you pray about that. I hope you can pray that God will give you the opportunity to, to gospel, give the gospel tracts or to, to, to tell people about what Jesus did on the cross for you in terms of the gospel, 1 Corinthians, you know, 15, 1 through 4. You know, that's something I want you to deeply consider. If you do that, you know, it'll, it's, it'll, it'll be, you know, it'll be a blessing to you. God bless and have a great day.